Hi guys, welcome to another episode of Rock Bottom Airsoft. It's good to see you again, and as always, if it's your first time here, it's good to see you. I hope you'll stick around. Before we get into today's video, as per usual, if you are enjoying my series of videos, then please do subscribe to the channel, and then you won't miss any of my uploads. I'll normally look to upload a, a gameplay video of some sort midweek, and then at weekends, We'll always discuss something Airsoft related, whether that be reviews of gear and replicas, bit of tech, uh, guides, that type of thing. And um, we'll always do that uh, every weekend. So make sure you subscribe and then you don't miss any of those uploads. So with that out of the way, what are we going to look at today? Well today, I thought I might go a bit more into load carrying rigs. Um, when we're out on the airsoft field, if you're a new player or if you're just getting into the sport, the hobby, um, what you might find is is that uh, you've got a lot of gear to carry, whether that be spare magazines, grenades, 40 mils, sidearm, the, the list is endless of the kind of things that we can carry in the game field. And as well as that, you, you might just be going for a certain look or you might like the look of a certain rig. Uh, give it more of that operator feel, you know, that we, we all aim for. Um, so, with without further ado, uh, let's get into load carrying equipment. Um, I'm not going to look at rucksacks or backpacks in this one. It's just going to be load carrying equipment that you wear on your person, as it were. Um, this can cover all sorts of equipment. Uh, you have everything from assault vests, which we'll start with through plate carriers, chest rigs, combat belts, that type of thing. All items that are supposed to make it easier for you to carry your gear in the field while offering you a bit of mobility. Some offer more mobility than others, some are lighter than others, uh, but we'll, we'll get a bit more into that. I have three main rules when I'm looking at my load carrying equipment. Um, it might change for you, it's all down to personal preference, it depends on your play style, whether you're going for a certain look like we mentioned earlier. So what I always um, look, look at when I, I'm getting load carrying equipment is, is the ability to move, the freedom of movement that that particular load carrying equipment offers, whether I can crouch, go prone, um, whether I can run as fast as I'm able to run. And the equipment's going to stay tight to me, not be flapping about. Um, it's going to allow me to have full mobility, basically. So that's my first uh, caveat when I'm looking at load carrying equipment. Next up, I, I always like to think that you only carry with you what you need. Um, many instances, I've taken too much items and too much stuff out on the field with me. Um, and then my load carrying equipment's heavy and cumbersome. And... Very often I'll end up taking it off mid-game, so I've got more free movement and I'm lighter and uh, I'm, I'm able to run a little bit faster. I'm not the fittest bloke in the world, uh, so I need all the help I can get for, for being able to run across the field, you know? And then my third and final one is 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 in line with that, is, is trying to keep the load down and trying to keep your load carrying equipment as light as possible. So any gear that you buy, um, you know, if, if you like me and you want to be able to move around and be in the thick of it and run fast and what have you, then, then try to, to keep your, your load as low as possible. We've got to remember that Airsoft is a game. If you're just taking with you what you need, obviously you can have armour, um, but we don't really need armour. Uh, we're not getting real life steel bullets fired at us. So I always try and keep the weight down, but that's not to say there's anything wrong with having a realistic weight. Um, you know, you, you can get training plates and things like that for plate carriers that will, will increase the weight of the load that you're carrying if you're doing it for training purposes. So, let's get straight into it then. So what we're going to have a look at first? Well, first of all, I think we'll have a look at one of the simplest load carrying kits you can buy. Uh, this is what we call an assault vest. Now, there are lots of assault vests available on the market. You can buy them new, or you can do what I did. This is a British Army surplus assault vest. This is in DPM camouflage. This particular one was manufactured by Webtex. You can pick one of these up surplus very affordably. This was the first rig that I ever bought when I first played Airsoft. My very first game, I thought, I need something to carry my magazines in. 
if you're taking your own replica or even if you're renting and you're going to have more than one magazine yes of course if you're wearing cargo trousers or combat trousers you can put those magazines in your pockets but they will flap about um, with one of these this particular one as i say is a british army assault vest so all the mag pouches that are on it are designed to take a, a stanag magazine or a 556 magazine so if you're using an ar replica or anything of that sort that takes a stanag magazine those will fit absolutely fine into these pockets these are very affordable you can get one of these online from a surplus store for around about 20 british pounds 20 pounds is a great deal in my opinion i still use this assault vest occasionally even now i like it it's easy to put on you put it on just like a vest it buckles up at the front and then you've got loads of pouches you've got pouches here for grenades you've got pouches down here for magazines you can use them just for magazines or for grenades there's a zip compartment on the inside to allow you to store even more in there uh, there is a holster built into this uh, assault vest but it, it may not holster your sidearm if you have one it's it's built as i say for the british army so this is a british army surplus um these pouches have never let me down they are lined um with individual spaces i don't know if you can make that out on camera but there's individual spaces for each of your magazines they have got a waterproof layer in there the only thing i'd say that's a disadvantage with these is that you buckle them up like so so when you're trying to get a magazine out in the middle of a firefight or in the middle of a game you have to take that off take your magazine out um and go from there so you know it, it can get a bit fiddly it's not the fastest but it certainly is easy to set up easy to fit to yourself and easily holds more than enough equipment for a day's game and not to mention the fact that if you're wearing a matching camouflage pair of trousers it's quite a good look um, it does look quite good it makes you look the part i like to go full dpm sometimes and this definitely helps with full dpm so that is an assault vest that would be for me that was my starting point to load carrying rigs that's only 20 pounds 20 pounds and it'll last you ages and that's for a good example one at 20 pounds as well uh these are built for for the military so they are built to last this one has never given me any problems it's been used in many many games loads of games and i still like it even now so that's your, your starting point an assault vest easy to do easy to get hold of the dpm ones the one thing i would say is if you want a dpm one they are getting harder and harder to get hold of surplus obviously dpm isn't in use anymore but i did have a look online and there are still places selling them and you can also get them on ebay as well so that is an assault vest that would be your first port of call i would say for an easy setup rig for carrying your load so moving on that's assault vest out of the way so what would be next after an assault vest i'm going i'm going to try and go up in price here as we go along now this particular item is what we call a chess rig um this is our first venture into what they call the molly system uh, which is m o l l, -L e now this is where it starts to get a bit more interesting a chess rig does not carry armor it is purely a load carrying piece of kit it's basically a yoke that goes around your chest and over your shoulders and it has a molly panel on the front of this particular chess rig is condor you can pick this chess rig up for around about 40 british pounds online uh, there are many suppliers of condor equipment it's an outdoor supplier i'm quite a fan of condor they're not mega expensive and everything i've had from them has been really hard wearing again as you probably see from the dirt on these pouches i've used this particular chess rig many times in the field many many times and i've always found it to be reliable uh, these are a little bit harder to set up you've got to adjust it maybe get someone to help you out uh, to adjust it and to fit it to you particularly now that that brings me on something else as well in this one i'm not going to show you how to put these items on i'm just going to cover the basics of what you can get out there and what's available for you if you want to see a video where i show you how to set these up how to put your pouches on 
how to put the actual rig on and size it to yourself, then let me know in the comments and uh, I'll be happy to do a video on that. But for this video, we're covering what you get. So basically 40 pounds, all you're gonna get is the actual chest ring. You don't get these pouches. These are pouches that I've added, hence the reason the color's a bit off. That was more for function over form, I'm afraid. Um, but yeah, these chest rigs are light. You can get a lot of gear on them. It looks deceptively small, but you can fit quite a, a few items on here. I've got this particular one set up for, for one of my SMGs, for my MP5. These are MP5 magazine pouches. These pouches are from Viper. Um, these pouches are for, for 40 millimeter grenades. These are actually Condor pouches. Now, that is the beauty of the Molly system while we're discussing that. You've got these loops, and what that basically means is you can buy Molly pouches, such as these or these, and you can get Molly pouches in a vast array of pouches. You'll see more pouches on my other gear as we go through it. And you can fit whatever you want, wherever you want, within reason, on this Molly panel. So you can set this chest rig up, unlike the assault vest, which has all the pockets pre-stitched on, and you have all those pockets no matter what you do. With this chest rig, you can fit whatever pouches you want. So you can put on whatever you need. So if you're running an AR replica, you can put magazine pouches on. If you want to cover this entire chest rig in AR pouches, you can do. If you want to put a grenade pouch on there, you can do. If you want a few AR magazines and a few pistol magazines and maybe an admin pouch to put your keys in or something like that, you can do that. And the beauty of Molly is, is that if you decide that you want to change out your chest rig and you want to carry something else out there, as long as you've got the pouches for different magazines or whatever you're going to be running, you can swap that out the day before or even on site if, if you have the time. You can swap pouches whenever you choose with the Molly system. And that's where the beauty of this chest rig comes in. It's light, it's very affordable at £40 for a good quality piece of gear. And you can get them in various colours. Mine is in black, um, but you can get them in olive, you can get them in multicam, you can get them in all sorts of different colours. Have a look online, see if they've got the camouflage pattern or colour that you're particularly after. But again, the beauty of this is you're moving up from the assault vest to a chest rig. It's lighter, it doesn't take up as much space on your person, you're not going to sweat as much in it, you're not wearing a full vest, and you're not carrying more load than you need to. You're only carrying the pouches that you require for your game. So that's chest rigs. That's, that's basically what you're looking at. You can get a vast array of chest rigs. You don't have to get the Condor one. You can get smaller ones, you can get bigger ones, you can get all sorts of chest rigs. So have a look online, see one that you fancy. That's one that I use, that's one I'd recommend. I like it, it's affordable, which is the basis of the channel here is that it's affordable airsoft and it gets you into chest rigs, it gets you into molly and that is the way that you want to go ideally. So that's chest rigs. So what can we look at next? Well then we get into the biggest item when we're looking at full body items. Now this is what we call a plate carrier. Now a plate carrier is something that the military use. It's uh, um, in this case, this is a Condor plate carrier in olive. I've got this set up with pistol magazines and AR replica Stanag ma magazine pouches. And that's all I have on here. Um, but as you can see, there is a vast array of molly available. This front panel that these are mounted to, that's molly. That's why, how these are attached. These are molly attached to the front panel here. The cummerbund panels here are also molly. As you can see, I've got a, a radio pouch mounted to the side here. Uh, that's a Viper radio pouch. So that's mounted on the cummerbund at the side. You have another cummerbund on this side, all with molly panels. So you can basically cover this and the top section here with pouches um, or even holsters. Um, your pistol, you can mount your pistol holsters to Molly if you get the Molly adapter for a retention holder or something like that. You can have your pistol mounted here, here, on the sides, wherever you so desire. Uh, on the back, on this particular one, I've got a hydration bladder on there, um, a camelback. Now there is Molly on the back, so you can Molly 
onto there. I've had to modify this to fit. However, um, you do get backpacks that are also molly attachable. So you can basically make a backpack part of this plate carrier. So instead of having separate straps for, you, for your backpack, your backpack will be mounted to your plate carrier. If you're playing longer games or mill sims, that type of thing, that will come in very handy because you can keep spur gear in there. Um, you can also play normal skirmish game and have spur gear in your backpack, which you know you can get your mates to hand to you or between games you don't have to go back to the safe zone, you can take them out of your backpack. So, a plate carrier, what, what's the major difference with a plate carrier and a chest ring? Well, as you can probably tell, a plate carrier, first of all, is a much bulkier piece of kit. Um, it goes over the shoulders, and around your waist, well, just above your waist. When you're setting one of these up, which as I say, if you want a separate video on setting these up, then you know, that, that's something we can do. You want to set this up so it's just on line with your collarbone. In the real steel world, these have plates in them. They would have AR steel plates in them for protecting from gunshots, which would be very heavy. Now, with one of these plate carriers, you can buy real steel, well, I say real steel plates, you, you could buy real steel plates not here in the UK, um, but you can buy what they call training plates, so they'll have, the, they'll have the real steel weight, they'll be a metal plate, they're just not armour uh, against real steel gunshots. Um, so yeah, I mean if you want to go the full training route and have, have the weight of a, of a real steel armour plate in the front and back, then you, you can do that. Uh, that option is there to you. The plates basically, there's a Velcro flap on the bottom here. Uh, you undo the Velcro flap and slide the plates in. Now in this particular plate carrier, I have got uh, plastic dummy sappy plates in there. I'll put a link to where you can get all of these items in the description, uh, including the chest rigs. I'll also put a link to where you can get some dummy, dummy plates. Now the reason I mentioned dummy plates is you could wear this chest, uh, this plate carrier without any form of dummy plate in there. You don't have to put plates in. But what I find is they don't sit quite right. They're designed to have a plate in them. So you want something that will hold the shape of the carrier. Now these plastic plates they hold the shape of the carrier very well. I believe there is a company that's also making plates to go in these that hold water. Um, so you can use them for, for carrying water in your actual plate carrier. They also do ones where you can freeze that or have chilled water in there, which keep you cool and, uh, and stop you sweating quite as much when you're running around on the field. Now I love this plate carrier. Uh, it looks good when it's on. Uh, they do look superb when they're on. They look the part. Uh, they are very nice. However, the cost goes up when you're looking at plate carriers. You can get cheaper ones. This particular one is by Condor. As I say, they're not the most expensive. They're also not the cheapest, uh, but they, they are affordable and you do get a good quality item. Now, you can pick up one of these plate carriers. They start at around about £80, but you can go all the way up to hundreds of pounds for a plate carrier. It just depends how much you want to spend. But this particular plate carrier is about £80, Obviously, don't forget with the plate carrier and the chest rig, you still have to buy pouches. So factor in some budget for buying the pouches. Uh, obviously, that'll depend on, on how many and what type of pouch you want to put on your plate carrier or your chest rig. Um, but once you've got the pouches, they're interchangeable between them, as you can see. Uh, so yeah, so a plate carrier, again, probably the bulkiest item we're looking at here. It's going to take up the most space on your person. It's capable of carrying a severely large amount of load, a lot of magazines or a lot of grenades or whatever else you might want to carry. Um, but again, you know, movement is more restricted with this than it is with the assault vest and the chest rig because of the plates. Um, but not too restricted, just much more bulky. That's what to keep in mind. It's a lot more bulky than the other items and you are going to sweat a bit under it because obviously it's padded at the front and back it's covering your back it's covering your front in this case with a cummerbund it's covering your sides some don't come with the cummerbund depends on what what sort of plate carrier you're looking at you can get smaller ones you can get bigger ones this is just the one that i choose to use uh, so that that's plate carriers as i say the the one thing i'd recommend with these is that you're looking at this if you're going for a heavier load or for a real world loadout. 
Uh, make sure you get some some dummy sappy plates because they do hold the shape of the plate carrier. They, they make it look more as the shape it should be. They keep it in one piece. There's a flop around. They don't look quite right without the dummy plates in there. So that's something to bear in mind. Uh, but and again, cost. You're looking at around about eighty pounds for one of these. So that's plate carriers. That's another option for for load carrying on full body. Now. I'll be honest with you, I don't tend to use any of those rigs quite as much anymore uh, because I, I've gone with, with something else. And that brings me on to belts. Uh, there are a number of different style of belt you can get in Airsoft and in the real steel world. Um, belts, they don't have to be worn on their own. I want to stress that first of all, some people will choose to wear, say, a plate carrier and some form of battle belt. Again, it, it depends on how much load you want to carry. Uh, if you want to carry a lot of gear, then a chest rig or a plate carrier or an assault vest and a belt, it, it, it increases your options immensely on what you can carry. Um, now, what I've tended to start doing these days is, is I just wear a belt because uh, I mainly play skirmish games. So I only need enough magazines and ammo to last me a few hours out in the field and then we'll be making our way back to the safe zone at lunchtime. And I can normally get away with that with a combination of my trouser pockets and also a good battle belt with a few well chosen pouches on it. Now this particular battle belt, we're going to start with the cheaper option or the more affordable option. This is a Viper battle belt. Uh, this particular battle belt can be had for around about £20. It's a big, bulky item, lots of padding in it. Uh, there is the option to buy a yoke. What we mean by a yoke is it's basically some shoulder straps that go on here, help support the weight on your shoulders instead of it just being on your waist, if that makes sense. Because this is just held on with retention to your waist. Um, it can slip. I've had issues with it slipping down. I mainly wear this particular belt as part of my sniper loadout. My Mark 23 fits in the holster here. I've got pouches for magazines, grenades, and this is an admin pouch that I was on about earlier, which basically is just a pocket, which you can hold your, your car keys, your keys, whatever you want to hold in there, some cash, um, <laughs> BB loader, Pretty much anything will fit in there. I've even managed to stuff a radio in there a couple of times. Um, you've got molly on this belt, molly at the sides, which is what these pouches are mounted to. And you've got molly on the rear as well, which has some pistol magazine pouches fitted to it. So this, this belt is molly all the way around. You've got molly panels on the sides and the back. Easy, easy to get to fit. As with any belt, you just adjust it till it fits comfortably. But remember with this kind of belt you do have to have it fairly tight you don't want it slipping down and flapping about when you're running around all of the weight here is going to be on your waist so i'd say with this kind of belt unless you're using the yoke which is additional cost um you know you, you don't want too much weight on it you can put as much as you want on it if it's comfortable for you but what i found with too much weight on this particular belt is it will try to slip down um, and ends up hanging around my backside rather than around my waist. With the yoke, you could probably carry a lot more weight. Um, you know, that is an option for you. It's not a route I've gone down, but it's certainly an option. But again, this belt for £20 gets you into the idea of, of wearing a battle belt. And uh, it's been very hard wearing. I've used this many times along with my ghillie. When I've been sniping, it's been crawled in bushes, it's been out in the rain, it's been out in all sorts. I've never had any issues with it at all. Uh, the padding's all still there. It's comfortable enough to wear. As I say, that the main problem with it is, is it does have a nasty habit of slipping down. So that's the, the first type of belt you can look at is the Viper Battle Belt. So next up, we go up in cost a bit and we get more into the belts that I tend to wear these days. Uh, this belt is by Helicon. Comes with a very sturdy buckle. This buckle is not going to let go easily. As you can see, it's a safety buckle, so it's designed for carrying a load so that it doesn't spring open. Again, 
I use this primarily for, for light duties, this particular one. I have a rapid pistol retention magazine holder. I've got a couple of grenade pouches for 40 millimeter grenades, pistol holster, and a radio pouch. Now, as you can see, this belt is much thinner, much more like a normal belt. Now, what you basically do with these is you have molly. This bit is part of the shooter's belt, part of it. This doesn't have molly on it because it's designed for your paddle holster to sit there. However, the rest of the belt is covered in a form of molly attachment. So as you can see, you can use molly pouches, the same ones that you would use on your chest rig, your plate carrier, the same sort of molly pouches will fit on this belt quite easily. So as you can see, that is superb. Well, for me anyway, because you can make your load out really light. Now, this belt, you're probably wondering, how do you run that through your belt loops in your trousers when you've got all these pouches attached to it? Well, the way that these work is that you have a secondary belt. If you look on the inside of this belt, it's got hook and loop or Velcro, and you get an inner belt like one of these which has the opposite hook and loop or velcro and they stick together and you wouldn't think it'd hold strong but as you can see it holds very strong so what you basically do is you run this one through your trouser loops to hold your trousers up uh, or just to make it tight and then this belt sits on the outside of your loops you basically just pull it onto the velcro and that's what holds it up and these belts will not slip it will not move um, it will stay where it is you can put quite a substantial amount of weight on it as you'll see with the next one and it will not let go it'll hold your gear tightly to your waist might try to pull your trousers down if you don't get this one tight enough which which i have done before <laughs> i can be quite embarrassing if your trousers start slipping but uh, if you get this one tight and then tighten this one on, that shouldn't happen. That was an early teething problem I had that with. Uh, if you want the Helicon one, you're looking around about £40 for, for this particular belt. But it does not come with the inner belt. You will just get that belt. You'll need to purchase the inner belt separately. So that's £40 for the Helicon Shooter's Belt. It's actually called the Helicon Cobra Modular, if you're looking for it. But again, I'll put a link to that in the description if you should fancy one of those. Now, we're going to keep this inner belt here because we'll get on to my final option. And for me personally, my best option. It's not the most affordable item by any stretch of the imagination. This is an FRV tailoring shooter's belt. FRV tailoring are a British company. Um, these belts, they are somewhat more expensive than the Helicon or the Viper. As you can see, I have got quite a lot of load on here. I've got a retention paddle holster on the non-molly section. I have an admin pouch. I've got four AR replica magazine pouches or 556 magazine pouches. And I also have oh, a grenade holster for my Dynatex timed grenade, uh, a retention bungee clip. Now that was a great idea from one of the guys on Facebook who attaches this to pins on his grenade, but that's another story, that, that's why that's on there. I've got a, a fast pistol mag pouch, and that's a pouch for my uh, my replica tomahawk, just to, to look cool and see if you can get one of them stealth kills. But anyway, uh, so as you can see with the FRV tailoring belt, it's got the hook and loop on the inside, and this actually comes with it. So the inner belt is supplied along with the outer belt, where it's just the same way. You put your inner belt through your trouser loops, and then you attach this belt to the outside. Now, this belt is really well made. I've been really impressed with it. I've used it loads of times in Airsoft. I really like it, it's really comfortable. The Molle loops are nice and big, nice and thick, easy to get your pouches mounted onto. But for this particular belt, you are looking at a little bit more money. These retail for around about 70 pounds, uh, 70 British pounds. Again, you don't get any of the pouches with it or anything you only get the belt um, and 
the inner belt as well but for 70 pounds this is a piece of kit that's going to last you a long time um it, it, again a security loop here a security clip on the belt it's not going to let go never had any problems with this it's superb now again this kind of belt you could quite easily wear with a plate carrier as well you can see what i mean that if you if you have this belt on with all this gear on and you also have a plate carrier or an assault vest or a chest rig with the gear there you are capable of carrying a lot of gear um, but it is worth remembering that all that gear adds weight and it all adds a, a loss of mobility to some sense or another so you know work out what it is that you want for load carrying work out how much stuff you want to carry if you're going to go down this route as i say i used to wear a lot of the chest rig plate carrier style stuff these days, that is my main setup, that belt. Four Stanag magazines, mid caps will last me enough for a game, admin pouch for bits and bats, grenade, everything else I can pretty much fit in my pockets. So, you know, it, it's your choice on what you carry and based on your play style. But the more you carry, the more it weighs, the less mobility you have generally. Um, but again, it depends if you're going for a certain look. So, let's just recap then what we've got. So we've got our shooter's belts, which are my favourite at the moment. That's what I tend to wear most of the time. You've got battle belts, which are slightly chunkier and can have a yoke attached to them. Um, again, very affordable, £20 get you into the belts we have plate carriers which again are great for a certain look um they, they are more expensive i would say than a lot of the other items but they have loads of space for putting molly attachments on so they're superb from that point of view and remember the golden rule here is molly um i, I started off without using molly as i say there is a lot of advantages to molly it means you can put on whatever you want if you only had this one plate carrier but loads of different pouches you could use this for every game you could change it out to have whatever pouches you want on it you know but again you look at a bit more money around about 80 pounds upwards spend as much as you want on one of these and you know it's worth getting the the fake dummy plates in there um you know again the bulkiest item on our list here i would say so you know that's that's plate carriers Chest rigs, I'd say, would be your in-between between just going a belt and going a full-on body-based load carrier. Again, molly panel, very simple, but whatever pouches you want on there, very easy to use, very affordable. One of these for about £40, and that's for an halfway decent one. Many different colours, they look good. Definitely a chest rig is an option to go for if you're just starting out, if you don't want to go the full plate carrier route and you don't think you'll have enough space with, with just a belt, then yeah, chest rig is, is one option there. And then finally, and another one of my favourite options, as we've discussed, is the Army Surplus Assault Vest. You won't see these in use much anymore. Um, you might see them at the odd airsoft field, but for the money you're paying, £20, you're getting a top quality piece of kit, and it works really well you can fit everything you can imagine in it and the, you know there's surprisingly good mobility in them as well for the amount of stuff you're carrying i mean obviously the more you carry the less mobility you have but again you know if you're just starting and you want to delve into having a load carrier of some sort 20 quid you can't go wrong really uh 20 pounds gets you into a, a basic assault vest an army surplus one in this case uh, but yeah, so the, the choice is yours. All I've done there really is I hope that's given you some information on what sort of load carrying gear is available and what's out there in the market. But it's a massive market. Um, you can have a look at all these different things, but that's basically the difference is you've got belts, chest rigs, plate carriers, vests. Them, them are the main ones you, you need to consider. There's all different sub genres in between those. Um, but you know have a look on the internet you'll see them those are the basic ones that you can go with 
make up your mind how much you want to carry, how much mobility you want, and as is always important in airsoft, how you want to look on the field. So I hope that's been helpful. I hope that's been useful for you. If you have found the video helpful, if you have enjoyed it, then please drop a like on it because it helps me out. If you have any questions that you want me to answer about load carrying equipment, um, then drop me a comment. I'll always respond to comments. Might not get back to you immediately, but I will always get back to you. If you did want me to do another video on how you put on this various gear and size it up to yourself and how you use the molly attachments, then let me know in the comments and I'll be sure to get a video out there showing all that stuff. And if you are enjoying my series of videos, then if we mentioned earlier, please do subscribe to the channel and then you don't miss any of my uploads. And if you want more content from myself, if you maybe want to see some of that gear in use or being worn, there's plenty of photographs and other discussion on Facebook and Instagram as Rock Bottom Airsoft. But until next time, thanks very much for watching.